Welcome folks to our lesson in physics. The topic is linear motion. This is lesson 3. In lesson 3, we are going to concentrate on graph work. So, what are we essentially expecting? We can handle distance displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration from calculation point of view. This lesson, however, strives to show you that those quantities can also be represented by graph. Distance, displacement, speed, velocity, acceleration, and of course, time. So, the graph is another way of presenting information. Tabulation is a way of collecting data. That data can now be represented in a graph. So we are still studying linear motion, the major players being time, distance, displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. What is the relationship between them? That is the core. Now we look at graph work. I'll be moving the camera here and there. But what do I want you to understand today? First, that these, these graphs, these graphs can communicate to us the type of motion which was executed by a given body. Okay? A body moving with uniform speed. So the, 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 the definition of speed helps you. Speed is distance over time. So when we talk of a body moving with uniform speed, Break that speed into distance and time, which gives you a graph of distance against time. The graph is linear because we've said uniform speed. Whenever it is uniform, just know the two quantities, the change in one quantity happens within equal time intervals. What do I mean? If I start timing distance, then after two seconds or two minutes, let me use minutes, two minutes, I stop. Then I measure the distance. Okay? Again, I start. After two minutes, I stop. I measure the distance. You find that if the first distance was 10 and it took 2 minutes, even the next one is 10, it will take 2 minutes. That's what we say equal distance in equal time interval. But when you are tabulating, we do it from beginning continuously. Okay? So, for example, distance 0 times 0. Then after 2 seconds, distance 10. After another 2, that means from beginning I'm talking of 4. Okay? So the distance is now 20. So when you get those boxes, you get the difference. You get is the same on the 
on the row of distance the intervals will be 10 10 10 10 and here 2 2 2 2 then we conclude equal distance in equal time interval okay equal a in equal b interval so a is not necessarily distance it can be displacement it can be uh, speed it can be velocity equal a in equal b interval b will always remain time because we are reading what happens to distance displacement velocity and speed when the time changes uniformly when we talk of non-uniform then you can see the gaps in between them is not a constant back to our work now when you talk about a graph of distance against time essentially this information is representing speed here displacement against time what does it represent velocity see this uh, displacement velocity speed okay i focus down again and then i bring you up this is a graph of velocity against time the relationship we know of velocity over time is acceleration so i'll be talking of acceleration okay so when it is uniform it is linear when it is uniform it is linear when it is uniform it is linear it is a straight line okay and focus back again so we have these graphs on the left hand side the graphs on the left hand side they represent if i may get them I'm not able to get the third one. I can't get the third one. So I'll concentrate with these two first. Then you will get the rest. So these graphs, the interpretation of axis is very important. The interpretation of the graph drawn, where the graph means what you have drawn inside. If is a straight line, is a linear relationship linear relationship okay now having known what axis represent we can now study what about when there is no equal change in distance over equal time interval there is variation that's why we use varying speed this is the graph of varying speed why the change in distance and time are not happening at equal interval or equal differences okay when you come to this this is displacement and time so we are talking about velocity this is graph representing velocity so this velocity is not uniform it is a curve what happens if you have done the 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 knowledge of tangent and you draw tangent at different points if you draw tangent at different points you will be able to interpret whether it is increasing or it is decreasing there are two versions here i've only given you one but the other one you do on your own the other one will be like this okay so what am i talking about 
I'm talking about you drawing a tangent here and a tangent there. Okay? It will tell you this figure is small, but this figure is big. So it is increasing small to big. Looking at my triangles, change in Y seems to be very big compared to change in X. Okay? Change in Y is big compared to change in X. So here, the velocity is not uniform. It is varying. When it is uniform, it is a linear line. And at any point you have studied, the gradient is a constant. Get it? Then you come and also draw at two different points. Draw a tangent and then make it a triangle. It gives you an idea of either increasing or decreasing. So that's why I've written times two. Okay? Now, we can come down. Here, we have finished. Velocity against time is what we talk about acceleration. When it is a straight line, it is linear. What do I mean? Any gradient here is a constant. Linear. Here, the acceleration is not linear. Maybe it starts slowly and then picks. Do you know how vehicles pick when you change gears? There are those which can pick very fast. From, let's say, 20 km per hour, it can jump to 60 km per hour. Whereas others, gradually, from 40 to 50, and then it picks slowly. The peak speed is very important when you are driving. That peak can make you get an accident or not. So you must understand the strength of your engine. Again, there are two. This, you interpret it. I want you to interpret. If you draw here, that, and if you draw here, that. That helps you to know from what to what. From small figure to big figure. Okay? So that, these are possible graphs you can be asked to draw. The uniform ones are common. These are normally asked to see if your application of linear motion is up to date. So they can give you a scenario, then they check if you can present it graphically. Okay? So remember the key things. Speed, velocity, acceleration. Speed is made up of distance against time. Velocity, displacement against time. Acceleration, velocity against time. Okay? These ones are very important. Now, I want you to note whatever we are asked in these graphs, the basic thing is to know what is vertical quantity times horizontal quantity. For example, vertical quantity here, velocity, times horizontal quantity. When I multiply velocity times time, what do I get? Or, the second thing you can be asked, vertical quantity over horizontal quantity. Velocity divided by time. What do we know that? Acceleration. So, you can get questions which test your skills on multiplication of axis or division of axis. It is important you know how you navigate because there are questions you can be told. A body starts from rest, 
and then in 10 seconds it has attained an acceleration of 50 meters per second then it moves at constant speed for five seconds before it comes to rest in the next two seconds a scenario then you are asked to present that in a graph form it only boils to the segmented motions what is the effect of multiplication and what is the effect of division okay so we can have one SPSS to elaborate on that subscribe for more